AG Grid comes with lots of column filters out of the box, but what if you wanted to build your own column filter? Well, I'm going to show you how to do that now. How to build your own column filters for AG Grid using React. Let's get into it. Here we have a simple AG Grid React application. We've got some row data and some columns set into the grid, which we have to find down here. We are going to use the grid feature, Reactive Custom Components. At the time of doing this video, you need to set the property Reactive Custom Components onto the grid tag. Soon we will make this the default and you won't need this property. For this example, I'm going to play with the year column. We can see here the definition and then on the right hand side, the year column is over here. Now, firstly, let's just enable the default filter onto year. So we'll say filter, true, hit save. And then on the right hand side, we can see the menu appears and we have this simple filter here. So I can put in 2004 and it filters the grid on year 2004. Cool. So what we're going to try and do now is create our own React filter to replace this UI here and do some custom filtering on the grid. So I'll create a new file and inside this file, I'll put in a simple hello world React functional component. I'll then go back to my application and for the year column, I'll set my filter as a filter that we're going to use. So here I've got my functional component, it just says hello world. And then here I'm mapping the component to the year column. Then when we look at the year column in the app, we'll see that our hello world filter is now present. It's useless as a filter because there's no filtering logic, but I've showed you how to wire up a React component as a filter inside the grid. So let's put some filter logic into our filter. Let's have a look at the props that are passed into the filter. So we'll do a console.log of those props. Now I'll bring up the dev console, do a refresh and bring up the filter. And here we can see the props being printed to the console. This is basically a bunch of good stuff that the grid gives our filter to help us build our filter up. I can see items here, such as the column definition for that particular column. I can see here the model, which is the filter model. We're going to work with that and also an on model changed callback. Now to tidy up our code, rather than having P here, we're going to spread that out and put in the things that we explicitly want out of the props. We'll now start working on the template. So we're going to put in a simple input field. Here we can see it's a type of text and the value is coming from the model. Now on the right hand side, if I do a refresh and click on the year filter, we have a nice text field here. Cool. The filter needs to tell the grid when the filter has changed. So we're going to implement a callback here. Now each time that the text has changed inside our text field, we're going to call this callback here value changed, which will get the new value from the text field and then call on model changed to the grid. This tells the grid the filter has changed. Please filter the data. When the grid is told the filter has changed, it's then going to ask our filter for each separate row. Does that row pass that filter? And that's done with the does filter pass callback. So here is the callback. And then I'm registering the callback with the grid using the use grid filter hook, which is a hook provided by AG Grid for registering callbacks. The callback at the moment isn't really doing anything. It's just returning back true, which means it'll make every row pass the filter every time. I'm interested in this properties here. So let's put a console.log in. And then we look at our demo, bring up the dev tools again, bring up the filter. Oh, error. Warning value prop on input should not be. N ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Crap. Okay. That shouldn't be null. That should be that. Okay. Let's try that again. Refresh. Bring up the filter. Yay, fixed. Okay, let's put something in here. Three, three. Now the grid has called this method lots and lots and lots of times. It's called it for each individual row. That's why we're getting multiple console.logs here. Let's just look at the last one and see what was provided to our callback. And we can see that data and node were provided. Data is the data item that we gave the grid. And the node is what the grid wraps the data item in and has some extra information in it about the row. Okay, to make your code a bit easier to read, we will just replace the P here and instead we'll put in the data and the node. Cool. Okay, now let's close this down. Now the last thing to do here is instead of just returning true, we want to return back true if the year in the data is equal to our model. Okay, let's test this puppy out. Go to the right, do a refresh, bring up our filter, put in 2008 and look at that. It's brought back all the rows where the year is 2008. And that's kind of it in a nutshell. All you have to do is create your UI. When the model changes, then you need to call on model changed back to the grid so that the grid knows there's been a filtering change. And then the grid will ask the filter, does each row pass using this? And we register that using the grid hook use grid filter. Okay, so it works, but I want to make some changes because this could be better. I don't like the way years hard coded into a logic. I want this filter to be reusable across different columns. 
So what I'm going to do is pull out the field from the cold def. So we'll say here, value is equal to the data, and we're going to pull out call def dot field. And then we return back when the value is equal to the model. Okay, we'll test that and see that it still works. 2004 this time, and it does. But we can do better than that. This is a bit of fiddly data we shouldn't really have to do. Also, what if the user isn't using the field? They could be using the value getter. So to help us, we're going to use this get value method, which is provided by the grid. And that's used like this. Const value equals get value, and we pass in the node. Now the filter's working again. We'll just do a check. Filter 2008, and it's still working. So get value pulls the value from that row for that particular column, and the grid takes care of whether it's a field or a value getter or some other way that the value's got back. So it's a foolproof way of getting the value for that row, and then we're comparing the value to the model, which is the set filter. We can now use the filter across different columns because it's no longer hard-coded against the year column. So let's go back to our column definitions. I'm going to go to age here, and we will configure age to use the my filter as well. Now I can go and use the filter here. I'll set age 23 and I'll also combine it. I'll set a filter on year. So now I've got the results of year 2008 and age 23 together. Now to finish off, I'm going to make the filters configurable with user parameters. To do that, let's first put a parameter in. So I'm going to change the template here so that we have a title inside our filter component. This is our new template. This bit here has not changed. What's new is the title here. It's simply displaying the title in H3, and the title comes from this new property that's snuck in up here. Now, this property isn't set by the grid. It's up to our application to set this property. Okay, so give me a second to write this code really, really, really quickly. Right, there we go. Okay, so on the year column, we've got the filter, my filter, and then we've got the filter params, and we're passing in the title of bunkers. And then for the age column, we're passing in the title of flippers. So if I go to my example now, and I bring up one of the filters. I've got bunkers for a year, cool, and I've got flippers for age, brilliant. So again, you can take in specific parameters into your filters by using filter params. You'll see that the filters provided by the grid has its own set of filter params. Well, you can create your set of filter params for what makes sense for your filters. And then those params get added in as React props passed in to your filter. And that's pretty much all you need to know about React filters for AG Grid. A bit of bonkers, a bit of flippers, and right now I'm going home for my dinner. See you later.